Hello and hey Sam. It is January 2024, I'm on line one of the Oslo Metro and we are going right out to the end of the line. Because last summer I got a message from Visit Oslo saying, Dear Tim, if we bought you tickets to Oslo, would you come and make one of your videos here? And what I thought was, how have I got away with this? But what I said was, yes, absolutely, thank you very much, but would it be okay if I came in the winter instead? And long story short, this is an Oslo Metro train 469 meters above central Oslo at the end of line one. And this is a toboggan. And today we're going to see which one of those two things goes faster if you race them back downhill. Bye. I just need to learn how to use a toboggan first. Welcome to Man vs Metro Oslo style. So here's how it's going to work. We want to get from Frona Setteren station at the end of line one to Midstuen, seven stops down the line, in the fastest time possible. On the metro, that journey takes precisely 13 minutes, but I think we might be able to beat that using a historic toboggan track called Korkatrekkeren, or in English, the corkscrew. And this is not just any old toboggan track. Korkatrekkeren is part of the Holmenkollen National Skiing and Winter Sports Centre, which includes, among other things, the Norwegian National Ski Museum and the frankly breathtaking Holmenkollen Ski Jump. It was here that Oslo hosted the 1952 Winter Olympics, and although Korkatrekkeren was not actually used for those Olympics, they built a temporary track instead, it was used a few years later for the 1955 World Luge Championships. In other words, this is quite a challenging track, but as long as you have a toboggan, it is open and free for anyone to use. And in theory, it should get you downhill quicker than the Metro does. There is just one problem with that theory, and that problem is currently wearing a bright red anorak. Have you ever ridden a toboggan before? I have not. I think I did when I was seven. Oh yeah, as a child. But down a small hill in Milton Keynes. Nothing not down a Norwegian mountain. No. Uh, right, well, what's the worst that can happen? Help! Someone! How the fuck do you steer this thing? Oh, there's people! No one died. Turns out there are a few other problems wearing red anoraks today. Like I said, the track is open for literally anyone to use, and occasionally you will find people casually parking their toboggans on the racing line. But never mind, this was only a test run anyway, and at least I've learned how to stop the thing. Is that for you? <laughs> Pretty good. <laughs> Once I got used to it, yeah. basically, as soon as I switched the camera off and I could actually concentrate on what I was doing, then it was good. Yeah. Right. Uh, should try that again. Let's take two. Now, that first test run took me 16 minutes with stoppages, which isn't too bad, but we need to get under 13 minutes. So I think it's time to reveal our secret weapon. This is Øystein, an actual Norwegian, and he is a viewer of the channel who was the first person to tell me about Korkatrekkeren a couple of years ago. Uh, this is Andrew. Oh. Andrew is our cameraman today. Hey, <laughs> <laughs> But in his real life, Oystein is a full-time train driver, and he used to drive the metro trains on line one. You know in the films where you have the amateur team that loses all the games, yes. and then the expert comes in the ex-coach <laughs> and teaches them how to actually do it properly? We'll see what happens, That's I'm not sure if I'm... <laughs> well, with Oystein on board, I'm feeling a lot more confident that at least one of us can go faster than the metro. But first, it's important to make sure we're eating the right diet. Uh, right, so Oysen, what do we have here? Uh, you've got a pretty much traditional Norwegian dinner yeah. uh, with meatballs, uh, gravy, uh, I would call it mushy peas probably, yeah, right. uh, and uh, potatoes. And how is this different to Swedish meatballs? They're normally a bit bigger. Lovely. Norwegian balls are bigger? Yeah. 
So with a bit of help from the extra weight of my big Norwegian meatballs, we're going to go for a final test run and see if I can go faster than the first time. But what I didn't realise is that as the day goes on, the track gets bumpier and bumpier. Bump, bump, bump. Bye. And I'm about to find out what happens when you add extra speed to extra bumps. Everything's fine. Uh, everything's not fine. <laughs> that was definitely going to happen at some point. <laughs> it's a shame no one was filming that. Right, I think this means it is now time for the race itself. Partly because it'll be dark by 4pm and there's only so long my camera batteries are going to last in temperatures of minus 15. But to win this battle, first we need to know our enemy. So on the way back up to the top, I wanted to find out what line one is really like. You used to drive this line, so what was it like yeah. driving this line in winter? Uh, could be really nice, like today. Yeah. It could be slippery and a bit difficult. Yeah. Especially we should explain this whole line is on a on an incline, right? Yeah. It starts in the town at sea level. Yeah. And at the top end it gets to... 400 and... Yeah. Um, so did that make it a challenging place to drive? It can. That means the whole train is uh, pivoted like that the whole day. And then you get a lot of people with slats and things like that with snow on. That ends up down there. One time I came to the terminus, go back to the other end of the uh, train. Oh, it's this much, much water in the dr uh, driving cabin. Yeah. Which is unusual, I don't think metro drivers in other cities have to deal with that. No, I don't believe that as well. <laughs> and of course, something else that metro drivers in other cities don't have to deal with is people trying to race them on a toboggan. But here, that is exactly what's about to happen. Right, this is it. That is a metro. We are at the top station, which is called Frognersetram. And we are going to... Mitzturum. And we are going to try and beat that train on a toboggan. And when I say we, I mean the Norwegian. <laughs> uh, right, why am I still talking? Let's go. Let's go. <laughs> okay, slightly embarrassing, but that train went before we were ready. So here's the train Oystein's actually gonna race, number 3351. And I mention that because I know some of you would have spotted if the number changes when we get to the bottom. You did it. <laughs> How much did you win by? Uh, one train. <laughs> so about five minutes. Not sure. Yeah, about five, four or five minutes. You beat the train by five minutes? Yeah, approximately, yeah. <laughs> so there we go. It is officially possible to go faster than the Oslo Metro on a toboggan. Yeah, hello? Ah, uh, sorry, Visit Oslo would like me to clarify. It is officially possible, but only if it's the winter and you're going between these two specific stations and crucially you're going downhill, to go faster than the Oslo Metro on a toboggan. Hello? Yes, sorry, your Metro is actually really good. I didn't mean... Hello? If you'd like to try and race the Oslo Metro on a toboggan, you'll need a 24 hour ticket for the Metro and some sort of toboggan. I paid 130 kroner to hire a sled from Akaforeningen, and if you're as good at tobogganing as I am, you'll be pleased to know that that price includes a crash helmet. Of course, you'll find all of these details and more on, guess where, visitoslo.com, and if you have the Oslo Pass, then public transport is included in that. So a big thank you to Visit Oslo for letting me make this video, thank you all for watching, and I'll see you soon.